I want to talk to you about foolish things. This is not on. I'll come to this one. You know, the word of God says this, that the preaching of the cross, the message of the cross is foolishness and to those who are perishing, but to us who are saved, it's the power of God unto salvation. Amen? Amen. The natural man receives not the things, of the, uh, the things of the spirit of God, they're foolishness unto him. Our message is foolishness to the world, but to us that are saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. As a matter of fact, it says later on in that chapter that God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Well, I'm going to give you something. I want you to listen to this. This is, this is the foolishness of God. This is the wisdom of God and the foolishness of man. I'm 72 years old. My wife is 71 years old. And I'm not going to get in trouble for telling you that. At 70 years old, God spoke to my heart and said, I want you in India. God chooses 70-year-old men to go on a mission field to India. Well, I got news for you. He did. And uh, if you'll give me the next slide, I want to show you where we're going. This is Northeast India. And the little way over on the other side of India in Bangladesh and s just west of Myanmar, which is the old Burma, and just south of China, all that wide up there is China, is that little bitty country called Manipur. And we're in the hills working with the Thatakuki people north of Imphal. We work among tribal Indian people who are so excited about God's word, like you are. We went for the first time in October of 2017. We met uh, a young man by the name of Haloon Chung Loy. Judy met him on uh, Facebook. <laughs> and she began conversation, came to me and said, you know, Jim, I think you ought to get involved. I think you ought to meet him and you ought to start a conversation with Brother Helen Chung Law. And so I did. And he had me teach via Skype some of his uh, groups, some of his churches over there. And we found out that there were 14 churches from, that came from four men. If you'll change the slide. Uh, brother, uh, back, to the, back to the other. Go back to that slide one more time. Helen is on the left. In the next slide. Uh, Haloon is on the left and he has an orphanage of 13 kids. Now, about all of the pastors have orphanages because the hygiene is not what you would expect it to be in the United States of America. It's India. And people get sick and people die. And there are children that have no parents and so almost every pastor has an orphanage. Almost every pastor is raising 12, 13. One pastor we know in the village of Cycle Hills, where we are now building a brand new church, has 27 orphans in his home. 27. And so when we support these churches, we also support a pastor. Then when we raise support for a pastor, of course, obviously, we're taking care of a lot of orphan kids. Uh, go to the next slide. And uh, we first went to a leadership conference, and you can, keep, you can change the slide uh, to the next one. Go to the next one. This is me teaching. This is Judy teaching the women. By the way, when we went to Northeast India, they had never seen a white man. They had been praying for 20 years that God, and, and now what I want to do is I want to try to tell you the story. And it's in slides, but I don't have time to do the slides. And Robbie, when I get done, you just got to say, Colon, you're done. Just shut, just shut up and get, get off the stage. And, and I will not be offended. I'll just shut up and get off the stage. But I want to tell you the story. In 1895, a missionary by the name of Pettigrew went to India. And then a couple followed with medical missions by the name of G.G. G. Crozier. They were associated with the American Northern Baptist Convention in the United States of America which in the 1920s went liberal. The Northern and the American Baptist Convention 
do not believe the Bible is the word of God. They do not believe it. And that's the way those churches that were started originally in the late part of the, uh, the 1800s and the 1900s, they believed the gospel, but they, they got liberal just like the Northern Baptist Church. Can, and so now they're just social gospel churches. That's all they, they preach a social gospel. Uh, people that are members of the church, uh, are, they're born into the church and they get baptized as infants into the, into the church. And just by virtue of the fact that they're born into a Christian home, they're Christians. But you and I know that's not true. The Bible says you must be born again. Amen. We know that. Well, a fella in the 1960s and the 1970s by the name of Koop Jan Thing Sing. Koop Jan Thing Sing. Came wandering into the state of Manipur from Burma. From what is now Myanmar. Used to be Burma. Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Holding evangelistic meetings. Going from house to house with the gospel. And we can, he won a lot of people to the Lord, but we know four. We know four men that he won to Christ. And these four men that he won to Christ, and I can't think of the other one's name. <laughs> I got him on the slides. We haven't got time for all the slides. Uh, if you'll kind of scroll through the slides until, we, until you get to the new churches where we're building the churches, you're going to see things up here where that's one of the orphanages, that's one of the, that's Kup Jen Sing things, and oh, Thang Man Kip, uh, Kip Gen is one, he's a village chief, Ki, okay, uh, this is the evangelistic service, we had over 150 people saved that night, yeah, this is a big evangelistic tent that we held, uh, meeting six, seven hundred every night. That, and go ahead, the next ones. You can see the crowd filled the temple, and you cannot believe the power of God. You cannot believe the power of God. You cannot believe how God worked when we give the invitation every night, all over the auditorium, all over that place. Hands raised, wanting to be saved. Come forward, trust Christ as Savior. Well, I'm gonna make a long story short. There were 14 churches. Now there's 17. 17 and we're building a brand new church in cycle hills you can just keep see us eating so stop right there so here they come one of the men posted this on facebook jim reverend jim like raindrops of tears and you notice his english will not be very good my heart feels with the great joy and happiness i ask myself where does all these comes now i remember all these comes from the living word that you had delivered to us. Thanks a lot. Please do pray for me now. I have new friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I said to these pastors, what's your greatest need? They said, our pastors need education. I said, what can we do? Teach us. So we started the Independent Baptist Bible Institute. And now we have, we're going back for the third trimester in February month, and we have 30 enrolled in that class. You can see some of the materials back on the table that we're teaching them that we've put together using a, a large bibliography. And uh, we're gonna hold evangelistic meetings again in February. And uh, Mike Pelletier, the evangelist out of Ambassador Baptist Bible College, graduate from Bob Jones University, is coming to go with us. Going to preach the gospel every night. And listen, God will bless. There will be people saved. So if you keep going, this is how the men started in the, in the, in the Bible Institute. The, on a bench, with the bench in front of them, is there six hours a day. Six hours every day. Keep going. Now we have tables and chairs. And when we go back, we need to buy more tables and more chairs. That's why I'm here. I need money. <laughs> Doesn't everybody? <laughs> so does, you know, it's so exciting to be here. Knowing Brother Robbie and Sam and Pastor Dwayne, Brother Dwayne, such great friends and such wonderful people in the gospel of Jesus Christ. All these years later, guess what? We're all still preaching the gospel, all still seeing souls saved. 
all still as excited about the word of God that we've ever been in all of our lives. And at 70 years old, I couldn't be more thrilled to be called of God to go to India. Couldn't be more thrilled to do it. And as long as God gives me health, we just keep going back. 40 hour trip to go. Uh, there's a student's uh, we dedicated a new building and you keep going. We dedicated a new building in, uh, new in Mahjong. I'll talk to you about that because we need to raise money for that church. Uh, here we preached here in the school and there were six saved. We dedicated the, we dedicated the, the school year. We dedicated the uh, teachers and the young man on the right there, uh, Leun, he's in the Bible College, Bible Institute. He's the administrator of the school. And uh, here... The first night of the Bi first trimester of the Bible college, four of the Bible college students got saved. And then the next day, we you can put it down, here we are baptizing them, like the word of God teaches us to do. I'm teaching about baptism. Here is Cycle Hills. We're building a brand new church. By the way, as we stop that, we are building a church. We have raised all of the money to build this church from the ground up. This church... This pastor, Pound Gum Chung Loy, has an orphanage with 27 kids. And I said, Brother, Brother Pound Gum, what do you need? He said, we don't have a church. We need a church in our community. And he said, we're going to start out here in the back. And they cleared out a room where they kept rice and potatoes. And they started meeting in that room. And we started raising the money for the church. This is where we're at right now. We put the roof on the church. You can see how far we are along. And you can see we're putting the floor down over here. And now we're putting the walls on the church on the right-hand side. That church, when we go back in February, we're going to preach the dedication service of a church that did not exist, that now is there. And it's the nicest building in the entire town. And we're going to do the same thing in Maozhong, build a church, if we can raise the money to do it. Now, if you go to the next slide, I think we got the prayer request, and that's where I want to stop right here. There have been, since we started, we have had over 350 people saved. God has been so good. We're going to have an evangelistic conference in February with Mike Pelletier. The Bible Institute has 30 enrolled. We need $2,500. We need more tables. We need more chairs. We need uh, uh, study materials. We need food, because these people come and they, they'll travel long journey to come to the Bible. We, we put them up at the, and, and we feed them every day. And they, every day, six hours a day in the Bible Institute classes. And so we're trying to raise $2,500 for more tables, more chairs, more study materials. The, the, the wonderful church that you just saw at Cycle Hills, uh, we, they told me we could build that church for $6,400. I said, you, you mean 64,000, right? Or, or 650,000, right? No, the guy said, no, $6,400. Well, guess what? It's going to cost us $7,400. <laughs> we need another thousand. We'll get it if Judy and I have to give it ourselves. $75 a month to support Lunsay Kipkin, one of our translators. And he's got an orphanage with 15 kids in it. $100 a month we're trying to raise to support six association. Now, we, the, these churches now are sending missionaries. Well, that's what you do when you build a church. You, you support missionaries, right? And $7,500 for the new church at Maozhong. And that's what our goal is. That's, what we, that's why we're on the road. That's why we're introducing this ministry to churches. And there are prayer cards at the back table there are prayer letters at the back table. Though I know you didn't get to see the slides, and I know we're out of time. But will you do something for us? Will you, put it, will you take a prayer card and pray for us? More than anything else, we need the power of God. More than anything else, we need the power of God. We want, we want to win souls, and we want to disciple people to Jesus Christ. And we are just excited that God is using us to do that. If you would pray for us, the Bible Institute, uh, it just continues to grow. They're tell he's telling me we're going to have 30 enrolled when we go back. 30 of those pastors. Well, there's 14 churches, remember. I mean, 60, now 16, going to be 17. Get to Mahjong. 
I'm going to die someday pretty quick. I'm 72 years old. I'm going, I'll go home to be with the Lord. But when I look God in the eye, one of the things I'll say is, Lord, let me thank you, dear God, for letting us be involved in Northeast India. Thank you. At 70 years old, you weren't done with me. We, we retired from Life Cell where we went to New Jersey. And I thought, well, we'll retire and we move to a golf resort and we'll get involved in a local church and I'll teach a class. And, and God said, no, I don't think so. I'm a unique ministry, a uh, minister, a unique missionary. I don't need support. I don't, Judy and I don't need any financial support. We pay our own way. We don't ask church, none of the money that you give, we don't raise any money to support Ju, Jim and Judy Coline. Because we're, we're self-supported. Every dime that anybody gives at any time goes directly toward a mission project. Every single penny of it goes into Northeast India Baptist Missions. Doesn't go for us at all. And I have no idea what the will of God is for North, the, the local manifestation of the body of Christ at North Village. I don't know what God's will is for your life. I don't know what God's will is for your church. You may already have all the missionaries you can handle. And it, it, it's out of the question. It's not out of the question to ask you to pray for us, though. And if you'll do that, we will be grateful that God gave us an opportunity to come here this morning. That's, that's, the, the, that's the major thing. Please come to the back table. Please get a prayer card. Please get a prayer letter. And it'll tell us more. And if we get an opportunity to come back and give you the full presentation at some time in the future, if God will allow it, we would, we would love to do it. Thank you so much. God bless your church. We love your pastor and Leslie. And we love Brother Sam back there. They've been friends for a long time. And Brother Dwayne, Brother Bertie, people that are associated with your church. We're thrilled to see what God is doing here in this church. And I want to thank you again.